Tomo took over. Um, and again, I've said before, he was. Just, I felt sorry for Tomo because he 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 was just dealt that hand. He was dealt mm. the players. You know, players were unhappy that two or five players had left. Um, he had to kind of somehow. We were, and the things were still in every competition, so he had to somehow try to g us up to keep going to do what we had to do. And I have to say, to his credit, he he got the best out of what was a, a really wounded squad, really wounded squad or team. And I think he got the, you know, he, he did a brilliant job. He, he doesn't get enough credit, I don't think, Tomo, for, for what he did because he, he took a team that was doing really well, who still finished the playoffs and got the semi-final, mm-hmm. like I said, to you, the commentary game, was probably the highlight of his career, the highlight of that his little manager uh, career. And uh, he done really well, but uh, he, was, he was dealt a bad hand. But you'd never have known it because he was always, always, always positive. Really positive. You'd never know. It's always positive. But from you've gone from Nigel, who's articulate to, to speaking to you, to, to Tomo, who was full on fucking nice. But then when he lost it, he lost the plot. Like he wow. would lose it. Yeah. So it went a little bit, you know, to the fore. And it was like, what the f*** going on here sort of thing. So it was weird in respect. But um, but that's that. it worked because, he, you know, like I said, it worked because... It had to be that way because, it, you know, he had to somehow G everybody up and to get us going again. And like I said to you, I think the hand that he was dealt, he he done extremely well for, for, for what he had. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So you've just mentioned it there, Coventry. That was my <laughs> yeah. first ever giant killing experience. Yeah. And you were, you, well, you and David uh, Holdsworth were the heroes. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. I think Alan Kelly was a hero, personally. But, uh, oh, Alan Kelly? Oh, God, yeah, completely. Yeah, no, I would say, I, it was funny. Obviously, it, it's funny because we should have won the game. I, I feel road, we should have won the game. I feel road, 1-0. Um, uh, and for the it? people that are younger watching this, by the way, because Coventry aren't a great side now, Coventry were under Gordon Strachan, were riding high. They were on a great record. They were actually on an unbeaten record in the Premier League. And little old Sheffield United, as you quite rightly say, Quinny, yeah. should have beaten them in the first game. We did. We, we they had a couple of chances. We rode the storm a little bit, but after about twenty half an hour, I thought we were we were the better side. And we had a, I mean, I remember. I, I still. It's funny. The home game, at, you know, when we won the penalties was was obviously the, one of the highlights of my career. And it's probably the biggest game through how nervous I was at the end. But the Highfield Road was like it was like. I remember now we had the way end on the side of the pitch was full. So usually, again, Highfield Road. You, I think you've both been there, but it was mm-hmm. it was like. The away end behind the goal was always usually sorry. Behind the goal was one end was always the away end, but Highfield Road wasn't. It was the, the the away fans were on the side of the pitch, so I was I was more nervous, believe it or not, for that game because I thought, oh my god, we're playing the Premiership side. And the second half, because I was obviously left footed, I was on the left hand side. All the all, all the away fans were right, literally in earshot of me because Highfield Road was quite on top of you intimidating so they're all in earshot of me like in, you know Queen you I got it all but um, <laughs> as if <laughs> yeah but if, if, if I did if I did a silly pass or you know I took whatever but you did you know, certain people that's fine but I was more nervous for that game as it goes and and I you know I remember it was at the end was it Peter you know, Peter at the end uh, stupid t- you know how I don't know for the life of me how Steve Grisovich managed to get back to catch Peter Couture at the end. I don't know how that happened, but he did. Because Steve Grisovich was about 40 years old. Yeah, and how he got back... And he looked he about Peter 70 Couture. years old as well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he got Peter, Peter Couture. I don't know how that happened, but he did. And, but anyway, we went to, went to, to Bramall Lane, as you know, and that, that, was, that was, I mean, as games go, that was up there with, if it's one of my favourite games, like, you know, considering, it was, I remember it now, Tuesday night, March the 17th, raining, you know, it was as zippy as you like. The pitch wasn't great. Um, and, you know, they took an early lead from a bobble. And true story, I don't know if you know that or not, but I think if you watch the video, but you see the ball bounce in front of Ned. You see the ball bounce over Ned. And because that morning they had relayed, Ned had said they had relayed the six-yard box. No word of a lie, yeah. So, they, they, so the six-yard box got relayed and the pit they relayed, the ball hit it and popped over his head. So he was fuming, he was. That was but, uh, Paul Telfer who scored for Coventry. Yeah, Paul Telfer, yeah. And, Ten times out of ten, Ned Alan Kelly saves that shot. Yeah. It does, but it just it hit a bobble and it popped over, you know. And uh, but like I said to you in that game, and uh, yeah, and at half time, Tom had come in and said we're in this game, sort of thing, and you know, ran and raved a little bit. I think more so just a jeers up, and we went out, and I think we could have scored two or three more goals. Um, we never, and I think we left it well. I mean, an unbelievable finish, by the way, from Reg. I mean, no, we left it. We left it the perfect amount of time for, for yeah. to have the, one of the greatest games that we've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, I mean, it was. I mean, I even now, I, I, it's funny because I still, you two, I still look at it now and now and again when people talk about it. And, um, put it on Twitter a couple of times, and you know, 
I, and it's, you know, I watch a goal now at Red Scores and I'm thinking how he because between me and you David Oldsworth is quite stiff where he walks where he runs everything about him is stiff you know he's mm. just stiff yeah, so how he got his body quite, yeah his, his back's quite straight when he runs yeah, he's so like got, that. <laughs> yeah so how he got his body in the position he did to score that goal I mean was an um, it was a great it was a it was a it was a great finish and you know and I, was it Roger who headed the ball back I think it was Roger heading the ball back I'm not sure I think it might be it was I think it was Roger who headed the ball back for him to a great header back. People forget. People say about Reg, but what you forget is the header, like forty with the corner and Reg popping the ball back. It was a great header. Um, yeah, Reg popping the ball back. But and then, you know, one all, extra time. And I have to say again, we were by far the better, the better team. After that, uh, an extra mm-hmm. time, we had Gaff Taylor had a chance. Forty mm-hmm. had a chance. Uh, Marcello had a great chance. Gaff Taylor had a great chance, should I say? Um, but you know, obviously went to penalties, and you know, the rest is. I think we would have, you know. The penalty, but Alan Kelly, without you know, he was three penalties. I mean, the first just I think what knocked their stocks off Coventry's was Dean Dublin Luke yeah. missing absolutely. When he missed, I thought they their play because it was on the side, was on the halfway line. I wasn't watching, but there's a little bit <gasps> he missed. He, didn't the, miss, he never missed, did well, he? Exactly. And, he, and he scored in the first game as well, didn't yeah. he? From the when, when the host of Homes Under the Hammer misses, you know you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that show, but no. I, 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 uh, no, when he missed, there was a, especially when he missed, there was a, when he missed, it was, um, it just, the crowd went, I just remember that, I remember, the, obviously when I scored the penalty, I remember the, the roar, but when he missed, I have to say, like, the, the, the silence from the cop, the, 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 the roar from, 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 like, the blades were, the ground was, was bigger than I've heard for a while, because I think we all expected, oh no, not him, he's going to score, but. Then when Ned saved it, I mean, and it was a great save, you know, let's get it right, it was a great save. So when he saved it, I think that kind of like, give us that little bit of, yeah, we, we could do this, you know, and uh, and that's, you know, again, I didn't know I was taking a fifth penalty, to be honest with you. I got, you know, I got told I was taking, I never, I didn't know I was taking a penalty until, well, yeah, until he said you're taking it. Were but, you um, a penalty <coughs> practiser? No, I, no, I, no, I, no, that's, it was, it was a shock when it comes to the penalties because it wasn't a case of, usually, get I, I've been in penalty circles you get asked like who wants penalty one to who wants them and it wasn't even about who wants them he Thomas was coming around at the time the gaff come around times was like one two three four um, and five I have to be honest with you a few people a few I'm not naming them names but a few players as he was pointing kind of just went the opposite way and like went down <laughs> yeah. but and I was young you know young dumb oh were you at this point Quinner 20 oh 20 20 when I 21 27 wow. 21 no, 20. I was 20. Sorry, 20. So, that is some bottle to step up and yeah, take the so penalty. Tw- yeah, but, yeah, but I have to say, Nick, it wasn't... But what, would I put my hand up? Mm, probably. Did you know that because you were the fifth penalty? No, well, that's the, no again, because that's probably the first penalty I've ever been in. Um, right. so, so, no, it, I, I didn't think... It, I, so my emotions were the fact that it wasn't... A, it's a good question, actually, because, no, because, again, I didn't know... Would I put my hand up for a penalty... Probably, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I can't, I probably put it in line if I said yes. I, if I was made to make one, which I was, I would do it. I, I wouldn't have said I don't want it. But if there was, if, if only four people put their hands up, I probably would have gone, okay, I'll have one. You know, it would have been that. You know, I would have trusted that. Again, I've got decent enough for it. I would have trusted that I would, I'd be okay. So, but it got to that where it was a case of you're taking one, you're taking one. And it was the way he pointed, Tom, the way the gaffer pointed, you know, it, it was just one, two, three, four, five. And I was number five. Um, and that's how it that's how it that's how it came about and again when Dion took it I was you know I think I, you were the podcast Nick you know a lot of people you know it was, it was Dean Saunders I remember now Dean Saunders and Graham Stewart come straight up to me and I was getting my hamstrings well I got calves I can't remember I was, I was looking around shitting myself really and looking around nervous didn't have time to think could see what was happening and Dean Saunders came over to me and literally and he, I was on the floor like with my legs up in the air and he kind of didn't pin me down but he kind of like Come over, like knelt down and like pointed at me. He says, where are you putting it? I said, and I was like, what? He's penalty. Where are you putting your penalty? And I was, and I was like, uh, uh, I felt under pressure. I thought, oh, I'm gonna go, go across the body, left foot, go across the body, keepers left. If and he says, if you change your, and he, I'm not gonna swear, but if you change your fucking mind, I'm gonna come and find you after the game, and I'm gonna knock you out, like you know. And, and mm. so that kind of again, and Graham Stewart was over him, like it's like the second, you know, you ever seen Paddy and Murphy, like the bouncers? It was like that. Yeah. Was like. One, giving it like good cop, bad cop. And he's like, yeah, yeah, give it, yes, Graham was. And, and that's what, and for those, so the penalties were quite a blur to me because all I could think about was Dino and Graham just don't change your mind. Don't, so in my head, I was just thinking, don't change your mind. Don't. 
and that's how it came about. And obviously, it it just transpired that if I if I scored, then we're through. And you know, I just got up, walked to the bar, and as I was walking, I've got a great picture upstairs on my wall of of uh, of me taking a penalty, but behind is all the players and every the fans, everything, and uh, um, it was yeah, brilliant picture, and you can see them all there, and uh, Dina in his suit, and the players like. Go on, Quinny, go on, Quinny. And it's like Dino just, I remember Dino's voice saying, Don't you fucking change your mind as I was walking up, taking the penalty line. And, and that's what happened. I got up then, you know, I, I put the ball down. And um, I don't think I've it. I have to say, as I've said this before, I don't think I've it. And I was crapping myself now. You know, I, I didn't look at anything other than, I just remember looking up before I hit it. And he was, the Grizzovich, yeah, he might be 40 year old, but I have to say, he was massive. He looked huge in that goal. He, he just covered the goal and he just looked massive. And I never, I don't penalty takers, and I never go high. I'd never go high usually. It'd always be low. But I just thought something in my head just say go high because he can't get there. I know weird when I say he, he can go low and stretch, but he just can't go high and up there. And I just thought go high. I didn't need to go as high as I did to look pretty good, but I just thought go high and don't change your mind. And I never, you know, and, and that's that was it. Then and the rest was like, and that was yeah, that was it. I was off. I was gone. As soon as I was, you know, as soon as I scored, I was gone. I didn't know what to do. To be fair, you didn't plan off. that celebration. That's for sure. I couldn't get my shirt off. It was tough. Yeah, I yeah, I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that as well. And everybody I speak to you say about that actually, but no, and I, but I have to say I was up there one of the one of the, one of the best nights without doubt of my life. And I remember, I remember getting more of the, of the fans, and I remember Ned, and we all did. And I, Peter Cotro, forty, was the first one to come over, and was when I was my shirt off down by the cop end there, and um, I come in, t- like walked in the change room, Gaffer gave me the biggest hug in the world. And I thought, and I saw, I was in the, the old changing back then, so I'm Gaffer come and get a big hug, and I had to do an interview afterwards, and as I come off the pitch, and I've gone in the change rooms, and Keena was at the door with Graham Stewart, and, and they were there, they prepared, they both, like, honestly, they got both bear of them, grabbed me, like, give me a bear hug, and went, I fucking knew you could do it, and it was just little things like that, you remember? I, I, little things like that, I remember, like, little, just a little hug here, or a little pat on the back there, and, look, and that was, that was, um, that was that was a really good night for me. You know, I didn't change my mind. And you know, when I mean, you got the senior player like Dean Saunders and Graham, you know, uh, Graham Stewart, were like, you know, saying well done and giving you a pat on the back, and yeah, you know, it kind of makes you it makes it all worthwhile. And you know, you, you know, thank God I never changed my mind. 